Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Pianist, composer, and band leader Orrin Evans is playing a week-long engagement, one with his trio, as well as his quintet, as well as the Captain Black Big Band. As you know, last year I profiled him with the Captain Black Big Band, and tonight he's playing selections off his brand new Positones record release, Flip the Script. And what I really like about this record is, one, he's really going back to those rich trio recordings and units by the likes of Phineas Newborn to Oscar Peterson to Bill Evans. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about his brand new record. We're going to talk about his origins of playing trio. And we're also going to talk about black American music and how he's really trying to go into the clubs and really change the stigma of jazz music, as well as talk about him as a pianist. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of the Orrin Evans Trio live here at the Jazz Standard. Congratulations on another fine project, Flip the Script. You are really going back to the traditional great trio groups of the past. I appreciate that. I'm just uh, trying to stay in true to the music and uh, represent some of the things that I grew up with. So uh, I appreciate that, that that's how it's coming out and how it's seen. You know, you just came off the Captain Black Big Band and going into a trio project. It's kind of like you were dealing with many personalities and now you're just dealing with three people. What's that like? Well, that, that, you said it right there, you know? I mean, and, and this week we also have the big band doing what we're doing um, on, on the last day. And it is a different dynamic. Uh, not so much dealing with the different personalities because I'm actually, I'm blessed to have some cats that are really easy to work with, but just managing everybody's time um, everybody needs things, and, and, and I mean, I, we all need things, you know, and you got to manage that with 16 people versus three. But the way that I operate the big band musically, to me, it always feels like a small group, too. We, we communicate just like a small group. So musically, it's, it's, it feels the same to me, but business-wise, you, you got to just 
manage 16 other people or 15 other people's personalities and needs and, and, and try to see if we can all get to get there and make the gig. Or and it seems like with Captain Black and now with Flip the Script, it's like you are doing an incredible amount of traveling now. I mean, your notoriety now has put you in a whole nother echelon right now. I mean, I, I hope it starts to translate into some dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's just it's, I'm working hard and, and, and been blessed. You know, got some other people on the team. I mean, over... Over the years, it's always been just Dawn and I, my wife, doing everything. And now I've uh, started working with Brian McKenna, a great manager, and started working with Stephanie Brown, a uh, great publicist. So everybody's working hard. There's a lot of hustling going on. And, um, and I'm glad to see the things that are happening. I'm really, I feel blessed and, and, and honored that people are receiving the music. I mean, and I just hope that continues. I hope, I mean, the hardest thing is to, to maintain that and not stress yourself out you know like you know you got the next you got to be thinking about the next project and you know and you're always as good as the last one you just did so that's the next thing to kind of have that balance of being stressed out so that you put out a good project but not overdoing it where you just can't you know maintain if that makes sense there's a thin line between going crazy and and doing <laughs> what we do <laughs> listen to flip the script you know I'm I think of the great pianists like Ahmad Jamal and Bill Evans and Oscar Peterson and these guys had a very unique style with their their trio and what is it that you're trying to do with this trio because like I said there's some real crisp innovative compositions that you're playing on here and then also you do the sound of Philadelphia on here too I mean what I like to do is just is play, feel comfortable, and, and have an environment where everybody feels comfortable. You know, I like to play tunes that, that are quote-unquote complicated or play some real simple tunes and just get to a space. Um, so what I'm trying to really do with, the, with, with any trio that I play with is just communicate with ourselves and then let that message reach uh, the audience. 
So everybody's having a good time, you know, on the bandstand, off. You know, not that it's just we're, we're playing this music on the bandstand and it doesn't reach the audience. So just to make it real hip and fun, and, and, and I don't want any... The only, the only thing that is uh, worked out, for lack of better words, or thought about, I'll say that, before I hit the bandstand, is I wanted to swing. That's, that's it. I just wanted to swing, have fun, all of those things. Everything else is, is gravy. You know, everything else is gravy. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to do with the trio. Just have a good time, communicate with the audience, have some fun, swing, all that. Another thing too about jazz music and you know I've been doing the pace report for four years now and it seems like the labels have either helped or hurt the artist as far as the marketing and the promotion as well as the vision of this music are you feeling that you're allowed to do what you really want to do now or do you still feel like sometimes the labels kind of want you to do certain things well considering that the next couple projects not even the next couple, but the next project and on from that point, I'm really going to be focusing on Imani Records and, and my label. Uh, and considering the only person I have to talk to about artistic things is, is my wife, I feel very free to do <laughs> what I'm doing uh, with my label. And that's what I encourage a lot of people to do. As far as record labels, um, I have been blessed to be with a bunch of independent labels. I know that sounds, that's, that's a double-edged sword because I haven't had a label with a pile of money to really put some money behind. But what I have had is Orrin Evans and I've just put money by, into myself and into my different projects um, 
to 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 augment what the labels aren't doing. So you know, when you, like the label that this record is on, I put some time and money into it to augment what they couldn't do. Because if I sat back and said, "All right, well, you know, I'm going to wait to see what they do," yeah, there it is. I wouldn't be doing half the stuff I'm doing now. So you know, you got to like figure out what is a little give and take. But uh, my ultimate goal is for it to all be Imani Records, and that's the, that's the next Captain Black record is coming out on Imani Records. Uh, the next Tar Baby record we're talking about, trying to figure that out, whether it's going to be Imani or another label. So pretty much my whole thing is I'm, I, I want to be free to do what I want to do musically, uh, but also marketing-wise, you know, because you're, you're kind of restricted when you do it on label. This is what we're going to do. And... Um, and when I say label, I'm speaking of smaller independent labels, you know. So my whole thing right now is, you know, freedom. And it's about to be, and that freedom is stepping into Imani Records with, with faith to really do what I sh should have done a few years ago. But now I'm in a different place and know how to do it. <laughs> talking about black American music and you know one of the things that I admire what you're doing is you're really trying to get people of color back into the jazz clubs and into the venues again and what is happening because you know I've covered this music for years and I'm seeing a lack of people of color in these venues I mean at this point you know I mean I'm really fortunate uh, tonight in my performance, I know a few friends uh, that are coming in and driving from Philly that I uh, that we hang with in Philadelphia. I think it's all about it's we we have to step up our game as musicians and really promote. We end up promoting to the same thing, you know. We we promote to the same group of people who are already our fans. So I made a comment in an article that might have been taken the wrong way, where I just said I already have those fans. And, and, and But what I meant was exactly that. I already have those fans. I appreciate those fans, but I want to get new fans. So we need to take that, that step as musicians. I don't want to say need. I feel and that this is what I want to do. Take that step to, to send out an email to some of my friends that, you know, I, I have over for a barbecue on Sunday, but I might not have invited to a gig. And say, hey, man, come on out and check the gig out. You know, and, and that's, that's the beginning. That's the first step. Then we start... Um, inviting whoever is the head writer for Jet and Ebony, whatever that, that you know, and we get those covers along with downbeat and jazz sounds. We get those covers, you know. We get a feature in whatever uh, Black Music Magazine is out. I, I just, I really, it, it's important to me because that's how I came into the music. Came into the music in Philadelphia and everywhere I went with my mother and my uncle. And I saw black people, you know, and I, I, I then I started playing the music. I'm like, well, where'd y'all go? You know, so, and I understand it costs money. That's fine. That's dandy. But we spend money on what we want to. And the reality is, how can we convince them that this is something worth spending the money on? And then educate them on the music. Just, hey, check this out. Check this out. So I'm not, you know, I ain't giving up. Uh, it ain't happening no time soon because it's something that is very important to me, you know. Uh, I want my sons to take their girlfriends and soon wives down, take them out to a club and hear some music. I want to instill that in them so where it's where where it is an option, not just the latest Avengers movie. You know, so what you want to do tonight? Well, you know what? There's some music being played. Very simple. I'm not trying. To, it's not a big statement or it's just I want 
jazz and black American music to be an option for African Americans to come out and see. That's all. Once it, once it's an option, it creates a flow. You know, this is an option. What you gonna do Friday? I don't know, we can go to the movies, we can go out to eat, or we can go to Jazz Standard. There it is, it's an option, it's already set up. If you choose the movies, that's okay, but it's still an option. That means the next time you might choose a Jazz Standard, you might choose a Village Vanguard, you might choose, we just need to create options. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report. Reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Oren Evans for his time, as well as the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Uh -huh.